How are you doing ladies and gentlemen, my name is Inkers and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be following on to our previous video that we've been working on with encoders and today's task is how do we set up and able to create a program where we can read the motor's RPM. We have a motor in here, see if I can get it in a the camera, there's a motor which is roughly running at I think it's about 1300 uh, RPM and we have an encoder and I want to know uh, and what RPM that motor is running and we're gonna be using this motor and this encoder as well for the upcoming videos as well to checking out some other things that we can do with encoders so today's task is to do it uh, to calculate out RPM so uh, there is many videos out there that uh, our people have created and they're for me uh, okay but they're a little bit too complex and too much work to do so I thought there's got to be easier way to do this and Siemens has done just that and today we're going to be checking out Siemens' function blocks how to get this RPM readout with very very high accuracy and very very simple way of doing it just by adding a couple of data into, uh, into well onto our a function blocks that we are going to be using that Siemens has produced for us so that's what we're doing today so without further ado let's get started <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, let's do a little bit of a small recap. As you, uh, if you have not watched the previous video, do check it out. We have gone into the, a, uh, uh, what's it called, Siemens, Siemens website, gone into the application example for HSP counters and downloaded their file, which is uh, done for V14. We converted that one into V16. And we copied a couple of, couple of uh, their function blocks and data blocks into our uh, library so we can use it in our project. So that's small recap. So the first one we are going to be, what we are going to be working on, I don't need this one, what we're working on is a ch uh, setting up our speed control, well, no, speed monitor, and RPM monitor, or whatever you want to call it. So to get ourselves started, first we need to go into the CPU, no, the, not the CPU, the actual controller itself. And go into high speed counter one. That's the one we're going to be using in this. And change the in go into the functions and change the type of counting to period. So that's the one we need to do to make sure everything works as we plan to do. So after that, we're going to open a new data block. And we're going to that's going to be cyclic interrupt and click OK. In cyclic interrupt, what we're going to do, we're going to go into instructions. Technology, counting, and extended high speed counter. Let's grab that. Oh, uh, when sideways right a little bit. There we go. Little block in there for that one. Thank you. So that's it. The block is in our network now. So what we need to do, we need to give him a, a little bit of some of some of the data for it, so for him to function properly. I'm not going to bother with this side in here. I'm just going to be doing the basics. The basics that what we need to get this going everything else in here guys you can do it yourselves you know exactly how to do it you have to do this stuff already so hsc this is where our counter goes the one is going to be working with this block so that's going to be uh, counter one and the ctrl it is a hse period file so this is this is something that is required that we need to create within data block but because i have copied siemens's data block you can do this yourself, so I'm going to show you what you need to do if you do it yourself. But I'm using Siemens this one because they've done all the typing up for me. So when you go into the data block itself in here, let's open up, let's actually go into the split. See this guy in here, HSC data, this is HSC period. All you need to do, give it a name, when you open your own data block, type in whatever the name you want to call this, this the, the one that's going to go here, or you can call it CTRL, and type in data type HSC underscore period and it will open up this uh, uh, in sub menu where you're going to be seeing all of this elapsed time edge count enable HSC enable period and new period so this is what you're going to see and as you can see Siemens already preset it but if you are from the start you're going to see this as a false you need to make sure that's true and this initial period 1000 is usually enough it's depending on your application but usually for the testing and things like that it's going to be fine also 
Siemens has done a bit of a work in here, so we can use it within our next uh, function block. So what we can do in here, we got my encoder in here. If you're using, if you are using exactly same as me, so I'm going to be typing in here. My encoder is 100 pulses per revolution. That's it. There's, ever, there's nothing else you need to do in this data block. What we're going to do in here, this HSC data. Remember I said that one is this guy here. Boom. That is done. So our first block is finished. So let's get let's get off that one. So let's add our next one, next function block. That's going to be our from the library again. And that's going to be calculate speed. Siemens has done all the work that needs to usually be done within this function block for us. Press OK. As you can see in here, number of pulses, you can just edit yourself. Let's say I want uh, my, my, my number of pulses is 100. Usually, you can leave it like that. Normally, you, yeah, you can always leave it like that because you wouldn't change it. Because you want to set up your, unless your encoder changes, you don't never need to touch that one. But somehow, eh, Siemens has created this, this, this fanciness in here. I'm going to use this one. There we go. We drag that in here. And elapsed time and energy count is very self-explanatory. It's already part of this uh, uh, list in here. Elapsed time, drag, and edge count, drag. And our speed, again, you can leave it as that. It's just going to be uh, uh, displaying in here. But we have created a uh, little place for it in our data block. So that is it. It's all set up and ready to go. One more last thing we're going to do. We're going to put this on HMI so we can actually monitor and see how that looks. So let's go in root screen. So let's do that. Go in our toolbox. Grab us a small screen and make it nice, nice and big. So let's go in that. Let's give him the data where we're going to be reading the speed from. And that's going to be our uh run blocks and data example and there speed boom done so we're not going to need plus so let's remove the s and let's increase our uh text format our digits to about i'll tell you one thing how many zeros we're going to need so let's do 100 yeah, so uh, how many zeros are we gonna? We're not gonna need that many zeros. So let's go in here. So I think five zeros, oh, sorry, five nines is gonna be fine. Yeah, that'll do. Here we go. Hopefully that works well. So let me pump it all this in and we'll be right back. All right, all loaded in. Let's have a look at it. So here we go. We got the screen, we got the encoder, we got everything there. And so first, let's have a look at that, how that's going to be looking like in our uh, block in here. Not this one, this one. And block in here. So let's go online. So let's hold the in. So as you can see in here, enable that. Make Do make sure that is true. If that is not true, nothing will be working for you. So do, do, do make sure. If it's false and you can't change it from false, which means you have set up your counter not in period, okay? It will not work unless that counter has been set in the period. So I want to make that, stretch that, stretch that very, very much high. But you do know that. So let me just spin the encoder in here. As you can see in here, it's going to start doing its maps. See, my, uh, my speed, I'll, I don't really need that many decimal points, but for the sake of it, why not? So well, usually we do, you don't need that many decimal points for the RPM measurement. So as you can see, everything is working as it should do. But let's have a look how that would work in real life. There's our encoder. So I'm going to put that. I know it's going to be, I know it looks dodgy as hell, but for the testing purposes, it will do fine. Can I do this? And you can still see it. So if I start up my drive, so as you can see now, I am spinning. And he says I'm spinning roughly about 28. I should have removed that decimal. I really don't like that decimal. But hey, it is what it is. And let's start speeding it up. And there we go. As you can see, there is our RPM. So we're running roughly about 38 hertz. So let's have a look at is it 50? Is it real what the, the motor says? 
So my motor says 1350 at 50 hertz. And as you can see, my motor is actually lying because I'm getting 1500, not 1350. That's where the difference is when it comes down to measuring proper RPM. Now let's, let's do 60. Good. There we go, we're getting, I think I'm having a bit of a slippage going on down there. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, that's about right. And then here we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you... And we just turn this off. Swap some cameras around. How easy it is to get set up the RPM measurement of your encoder into your Siemens PL. See, so uh, as I said, I'm not sure I mentioned at the very beginning that there's a lot of videos out there that, that you, you, it's quite complex and I thought there's got to be an easier way and Siemens has done it. Use, use Siemens's blocks, the data block and the function block and you're going to be well on your way and, and it's easy, it's, 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 it's convenient and it saves you a lot of time. That's, and that's when it comes down to programming, it's all about. So, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, this has helped your video to you. And uh, so, yeah, don't forget to like the video if you do like the video. And do subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.